Atlanta Press Club Debates 2008, the Democratic race for the 4th District of the Public Service Commission is brought to you from Georgia Public Broadcasting. Here is the moderator for today's debate. Good evening and welcome. I'm Richard Warner, the host of Georgia's Business here on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Welcome to our 2008 election campaign debates that are originating from the studios of GPB. Today's debate is organized by the Atlanta Press Club. Now let's meet the Democratic candidates who will face each other in Georgia's Public Service Commission 4th District primary election. They are in alphabetical order. Bob Indeck. Mr. Indeck is a professional engineer with experience in energy research and development. He sees regulating energy resources as his major challenge on the PSC. And Jim Powell. Mr. Powell served as a senior executive within the U.S. Department of Energy, managing a number of initiatives. He has more than 20 years of energy policy and program experience. He currently works as an independent energy consultant to states, local governments, and to industry. Now here's the format for tonight's debate. In the first round, each candidate will answer a total of two questions from our three panelists of journalists. In the second round, the candidates will ask each other two questions apiece. Each candidate will then have time for a rebuttal in that second round. And in the third round, the panelists will continue questioning the candidates. And then finally, at the end of the broadcast, each candidate will have 30 seconds to make a closing statement. Now, before we get started, let's meet our three panelists who have been selected by the Atlanta Press Club. First, we have Peralt Paul. Mr. Paul is a reporter for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Next, Jake Armstrong, a political reporter for Morris News Service. And our third panelist is John Sepulveda, Rome Bureau Chief for Georgia Public Broadcasting. And now let's get started with tonight's debate. In the first round, each candidate will be asked two questions by our panelists. The candidates have 60 seconds to answer each question. And by random selection, Jim Powell gets the first question from Peralt Paul. Peralt? Mr. Powell, um, what would you say is the PSC's biggest failure or failures in terms of energy policy? Well, in my opinion, that the state of Georgia really does not have an energy policy. We, uh, we generate electricity and we and we sell electricity. Um, we, uh, we don't look at all aspects of energy and how we should be generating electricity. We don't look at the portfolio of fuels uh, that, that we have out there. Um, the biggest failing is, in, in my estimation, is, is not considering alternatives to fossil fuels and natural gas and, and nuclear. There's a, a host of other opportunities out there uh, fuels that we could put into the mix, and also energy efficiency. Energy efficiency is something that's very important to Georgia, and Georgia is falling behind and not considering energy efficiency. Jake Armstrong from Morris News Service. You may ask your question to Bob Indeck. Mr. Indeck, how much do you know about your opponent's positions on energy issues, and how do you differ? Well, I know about my opponent's positions on energy issues from the literature that he's put out and from the numerous public speaking engagements that he's engaged in. Uh, mostly, uh, we differ in uh, our long-term approaches. Uh, on a very long term, I am very pro-nuclear. It's a clean energy technology. It is uh, an energy technology that uh, will reduce our uh, carbon load and will reduce the uh, dependence that we have on fossil fuels. Uh, as you know, approximately 80 to 85 percent of our electricity today in Georgia is generated from coal fire plants. And coal is a fossil fuel that is rapidly increasing in price, which will affect the rates that Georgians pay. Thank you. Now from Georgia Public Broadcasting, John Sepulveda, it's your turn to ask Jim Powell a question. And Mr. Powell, I want to pick up on what he was just talking about, nuclear energy. What is your stance on nuclear power, and how does that fit into the diversification portfolio that you're suggesting? I think all fuel sources should be on the table. I think uh, I, I'm not opposed to nuclear. It's probably not at the top of my list. I think it's probably going to be one of the more difficult technologies to build. The cost of construction continues to rise daily. There's an incredible bureaucratic approval process that has to, that the um, uh, utility would have to go through, the developer would have to go through to build a nuclear power plant. But I think it should be on the table. I don't think we should take anything off the table. I think nuclear is an option, coal is an option, 
all renewables are options. We, there's opportunities for wind, there's opportunities for, for uh, solar, and there's opportunities for biomass, which should be a larger part of the fuel mix. And as we conclude this first round of questioning, we'll go back to Peralt Paul, who may ask the final question for Bob Indek. Uh, Mr. Indek, do you think Georgia's deregulated natural gas market is working for consumers? If not, how would you change it? Georgia gas is basically a monopoly. The supply of gas comes from Atlanta Gas. The marketers simply send the gas on and bill the consumers. When you as a consumer have your house heated by gas, when you cook your food by gas, you don't really have a choice to change the method of heating. You're, you're pretty, pretty well stuck with what you've chosen. So because you don't really have a choice, all the marketers really do is add an additional layer of profit between the natural gas supply and you. I believe that gas regulation has been a failure in Georgia. I see no reason for it. And I believe that rates of gas, natural gas to consumers could be substantially decreased should the legislature decide to, de to re-regulate the industry. Well, that concludes round one of this debate. It's now time for the candidates to ask each other questions. This is how the format will work as we enter this second phase of the debate tonight. The candidate will have 15 seconds to ask a question to his opponent. The opponent will have 60 seconds to respond, and then the candidate who asked the question has 30 seconds for a rebuttal. By random selection, Bob Indek will ask the first question to his opponent, Jim Powell. Jim, the Southeast Division of the United States Department of Energy that you directed had a declining budget adjusted for inflation in several of the programs that you name on your resume. And further, the division seems to have entirely disappeared after 2006, the year of your retirement. Can you explain that? I certainly can explain. And actually, Bob, that's a great question. Um, what happened is the Republicans actually each year continued to decrease the, the budget for the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy. Uh, every year the, the, the budget declined. Even when we had soaring energy prices in this country, the budget continued to decline. Also in the year 2006, the Republicans actually chose to close not only the office in Atlanta, but all six regional office, offices nationwide. So it was, a, it was a move across the country and consolidate the work in two locations, one in Pittsburgh and one in Denver, Colorado. So it was an economy move in some aspects, but it was, it was a partisan public and Republican uh, move as well. Mr. Eddick, you're allowed 30 seconds to sum up, rebut what he said. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Powell, for answering that question that, that uh, bothered us. Uh, it is, it's difficult to see how an administration can uh, basically be against uh, energy conservation and energy uh, policies that help the consumer, but you've certainly explained well. Thank you. Jim Powell, up next you may ask Bob Indek your first question. Go ahead. One of the uh, things that you say, Bob, is that you have a technical knowledge of natural gas production specifics that is critical to the regulation of natural gas. The Public Service Commission has a well-qualified staff, engineers, accountants, rate analysts, attorneys, economists, what have you. I want to know how you would, be, you would anticipate working with those staff at the Public Service Commission and use your technical knowledge and your technical skills and education to ensure that the citizens in Georgia continue to pay a fair and affordable price for natural gas? Oh, thank you. That's an excellent question. Uh, basically, my approach to this entire uh, qualification is that I am an engineer, and it is true that the Public Service Commission does have engineering experts and other experts available to give opinions to the commissioners, but isn't it better for the commissioners themselves to have an understanding from the most basic sense of the processes and of the uh, technical nature of production. It's hard uh, for me to understand how a commissioner uh, can make a decision on a complex issue 
uh, by simply taking the recommendations of staff without truly understanding the processes involved. Mr. Powell, if you desire, you have 30 seconds to rebut. Um, no rebuttal. Okay. Uh, Mr. Indek, your second question. Uh, Mr. Powell, uh, you've spent a lifetime working for the Department of Energy, who I believe has a failed policy and is part of the fix that we're in right now. And then you retired with a, a federal pension, and you're running for the Public Service Commission, which is a, another government job with the state. Uh, how, do, how do you feel uh, being able to represent common folks who uh, work for a living, getting up each morning, striving to compete in a changing world, and not having their salaries guaranteed? Well, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I, I have 30, I'm proud of my 35 years of, of service to our nation, uh, and, and I stand on that. Uh, I could sit back and, and uh, complain about what's happening here in Atlanta or what's not happening here in Atlanta. Or I could do something, and I'm doing something by running for office. Uh, I, I, yes, I could sit in my rocking chair in Hiawassee and, and look at the wonderful, majestic view of the North Georgia mountains, but I chose at my advanced age of 59 years to do something. And that's the reason I'm running. I think I can make a difference on the Public Service Commission and help the citizens of Georgia keep their rates low and affordable. Mr. Indek, a rebuttal if you choose. No rebuttal. And Mr. Powell, you may ask your second and final question. Bob, you've mentioned on many occasions that the job for the Public Service Commission is a technical position. Our, our primary difference is, I believe, it's a policy position. Uh, please explain why you believe it is a technical position and how you will specifically use your skills and your abilities uh, from a technical perspective in deciding rate cases and making sure that the energy companies provide rates to the citizens of Georgia that are fair and affordable. Thank you. That's an excellent question, Jim. The Public Service Commission is not a rubber stamp for the energy companies. The Public Service Commission has more than that. The Public Service Commission can stand as a bully pulpit to, for the commissioners to make positive suggestions and perhaps wield a little bit of a carrot and stick to the existing energy companies to try to advance into the 21st century. There is no doubt in my mind that the energy mix that we have now, which is primarily coal-fired plants for electrical production, is insufficient to meet the needs of Georgians in the next century or even in the next 20 years. Therefore, I feel that, that with a solid technical knowledge, I can suggest knowledgeable alternatives to this for uh, the Commission and for Georgians to consider. Mr. Powell, rebuttal if desired. Well, I personally believe that it, the, the position on the Public Service Commission is a policy position. It's a, it's a position that needs to understand and recognize the recommendations of the technical staff. Uh, yes, I think it's important to have a good knowledge of the issues, uh, and obviously that, that, that's, that's uh, essential, but I think the recommendations of the, of the staff are, are important as well. Uh, I personally don't see where a technical background uh, would add that much to it. And that concludes our second round of questioning, the candidates questioning each other. And now for the third round, we return to our panel of journalists from around the state who will ask questions of the candidate of their choice. We ask our journalists to please identify the candidate as they ask the question. Candidates will be allowed one minute to respond, and as the moderator, I'll determine if the opposing candidate will be given 30 seconds for a rebuttal. And now we'll begin this third round with a question from Jake Armstrong from Morris News Service. Jake? Uh, Mr. Powell. Should utilities be allowed to collect pre-construction costs ahead of construction? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I, um, and I know some of the positions that are, that are of the current commissioners, but uh, and, you know, I suspect you're referring to the, uh, the proposed construction of two nuclear uh, units over at Plant Vogel where, the, where Georgia Power has come in and requested uh, that they start uh, collecting uh, from the ratepayers to, to build those in anticipation of those being built. And I think Georgia Power needs to look at opportunities other than advanced funding uh, of, of uh, construction of new generation facilities. Um, I, it's, too prem it's premature to, to do that at this point in time. Mr. Indak, 30 seconds, your response to that question. Uh, in, that, in this regard, I absolutely agree with Mr. Powell. 
I believe that collecting advanced costs uh, would put a, an undue burden upon the uh, ratepayer in Georgia. Further, uh, whenever costs are paid on an ongoing basis before the work is actually done, it has a tendency to lead to very inefficiencies of management. Up next, John Sepulveda from Georgia Public Broadcasting will ask the next question. Mr. Indek, I want to pick up on your belief that having a technical understanding will greatly serve you. I actually have a good friend who's an engineer for NASA, and he says if there's one thing you want to know about engineers, it's that they can fix the refrigerator, but they can't open a beer. <laughs> and that, that, that's, the, that's the way he characterizes it. Do you have the personal and political skills that are a big part of this job to carry this position through? My previous work, I was a chief of power and lighting for the United States Navy in Boston, where I supervised quite a few people of various diverse backgrounds in this field. I served as a chief of process engineering for the United States Army in Corpus Christi. Again, supervising numerous individuals, working with foreign governments, as well as the United States government on uh, international projects for the United States Army. So, yes, indeed, I think that I have the political ability to bring a consensus, as well as the engineering background to really understand the technology that these plan that uh, our two monopoly suppliers are trying to uh, uh, work with. And Peral Paul, it's your turn to ask a question, sir. Uh, Mr. Powell, what would you say is your opponent's biggest asset for PSC uh, commission job, and what would you characterize as his biggest weakness? I think his biggest asset would be his knowledge of the issues, his knowledge of energy issues, and um, and uh, perhaps his passion. Uh, I think. Um, his biggest weakness is that he fails to recognize that the Public Service Commission job is a policy job. He thinks it's more of a technical job, as we've already discussed. So I, I think he seems to be putting way too much emphasis on that. When you have to look at the big picture, you can't just look at the technical aspect of it. You have to understand the needs of the ratepayers and the needs of the investor-owned utilities that, that need to make a prom profit. They have responsibilities to their shareholders. So it's much bigger than just the technical piece. It's, it's, I think he needs to look at the big picture as opposed to looking at just the technical aspect of it. Mr. Indek, your assessment of the strength and weakness of your opponent. Well, I think that my opponent is, is strong he, in his uh, accounting background and in his background of managing, successfully managing a department for the Department of Energy. I think that uh, he would uh, certainly fit in well with the four other existing commissioners should a Democrat be elected. But as a weakness, I don't think that this state can well afford to have uh, personnel making decisions without a solid knowledge of what they're deciding on. Jake Armstrong, your question. Uh, Mr. Indek, what changes to the state's energy policy would you advocate if elected? Well, Mr. Armstrong, I would like the state to start considering alternative sources of energy. I'd like to show this picture. If we can put it on television. We can't see this. Okay, what this is a picture of is a production machine that is currently in operation since last December in California by a company called Nano Solar. They make a completely they have a completely different method of manufacturing solar cells and a single machine that cost two million dollars, under two million dollars, can in two years produce as much power capacity as a nuclear plant. This is a technology that Georgia needs to look at, we have to get into the 21st century. Well, Mr. Powell, I'm interested in your follow-up on that. You probably were not prepared for one uh, specific example, uh, but uh, does such a panacea exist? Well, we've had huge advances in solar technology in the past 10 years, and actually right here at Georgia Tech, they have a center of excellence for, for photovoltaics, and, uh, and, and huge advances have been made. Uh, and, and I think there's tremendous opportunity to make solar cells more efficient. 
and uh, we probably need a moonshot, if you will, for, uh, for solar technology. But uh, you know, solar is certainly viable in many aspects, and I think it will continue to be more efficient over the as years to come if, as we put more uh, money into research and development. Judge Polvado, your question. Uh, Mr. Powell, your residency to run for the District 4 PSC seat was disputed by your challenger, as you know. A judge dismissed that claim, but your, your, challenge, your opponent brought up an, an interesting timeline, and he notes that you had your mail delivered to a home that you no longer lived in. Uh, past the qualification run. Did you move into your current residence to run for the open seat? How long have you been waiting to, to sit on that rocking chair that you spoke about? <laughs> That's a good question, I'm, and I'm glad you asked it because I think it certainly needs to be brought to the public's uh, attention. The judge did decide conclusively that I was a resident of District 4, so, so that is, that's no longer an issue. That decision has been made. I actually uh, mo purchased my home in District 4 in Hiawassee, Georgia in August of 2006. Uh, I have uh, I retired from the U.S. Department of Energy in February of 2007, which is when I established my residency there. Uh, the preponderance of the evidence that I submitted in this case indicated that I am a resident of Towns County, and absolutely not did I not move there to become uh, qualified to run in District 4. We actually moved there. To, when my wife and I went up there and stayed to celebrate our 35th wedding anniversary. We stayed at a bed and breakfast. We saw the house across the street, and we, we turned to a realtor. The next day, we bought the house. And so, no, it, it, it was certainly a spontaneous uh, decision to do that, although we've been going to Hiawassee for the last uh, 30 years. Mr. Indek, in your opinion, is this a dead issue? It, the issue was decided by an administrative judge, and in my opinion, it is a dead issue, but I would like to correct uh, the fact that although I presented the uh, evidence of this to the Secretary of State, Karen Handel, it was actually the Secretary of State's office that brought the challenge to Mr. Powell, not myself. In this third round, we'll finish the questioning now with Peralt Paul. Uh, Mr. Indek. Uh, consumer advocates say the current policy regarding private conversations between PSC members and regulated utilities is better than it used to be, but it's still a little bit too weak. Um, utilities still want those conversations to continue in secret. What do you think about the current policy? Do you think it should be strengthened, weakened, or eliminated? And what will be your personal practice? It's an excellent question. Uh, basically, I decided to run for the Public Service Commission when Angela Spears decided not to run, because I believe, as she does, that ex parte communications between the regulators and Georgia Power or the suppliers are not correct. If somebody has something to say, let them say it in public, let them say it out loud. Let's not have any da backroom deals. Let's not have any, any good old boy type antics. Let's bring it all into the open. So yes, indeed, I believe that these conversations should be highly regulated and the law should be changed to promote that regulation. Mr. Powell, 30-second rebuttal. Um, I actually agree with my opponent. Uh, in fact, I think we should take it a step further. I think this is something the General Assembly should take up because many, most states don't allow the ex parte, the private communications between the, the commissioners and, 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 the, uh, and, and the utilities that they regulate. So I mean, to me, it's just something that's fundamentally wrong. It should not be allowed. The General Assembly should deal with it if the public service, can't, service cannot deal with it on their own. And that wraps up the questioning for this evening's debate. Each of the Democratic candidates for the 4th PSC District will now have a 30-second closing statement. Bob Indek was randomly selected to make that first statement. Mr. Indek. Ladies and gentlemen, we're entering a new era. We can't go to using coal-powered uh, power plants for our future. We have to look at alternatives. The city of Houston is now considering wind power as a major alternative. This nano solar that I mentioned is producing these solar cells at the price of 30 cents a watt, which is approximately 1 20th of that of producing a nuclear plant. Thank you. And now Jim Powell will give his closing statement. Thank you, and thank you for the opportunity to be here today and, and actually conduct this debate. Uh, I believe we're in an energy crisis right now, uh, and I think energy is, is, is probably the most important thing on everyone's agenda. 
and I think we need to pay attention to that. I think we need to be innovative. I think we need to look at new technologies, or we need to look at new sources of energy. We need to get ahead of the curve and get ahead of the other states in how we generate in electricity in this state. And we also need to focus more and develop a national standard, a state standard, and adopt uh, standards that have been other states have done regarding energy efficiency. And that concludes our debate. We'd like to remind voters around Georgia that the primary elections will be held on Tuesday, July the 15th. Our thanks to the candidates and to our panel of journalists for being with us. And we'd also like to thank the Atlanta Press Club for arranging today's debate. For more information about the Atlanta Press Club, you can visit their website at atlantapressclub.org. The debates that air on Georgia Public Broadcasting will be archived on the Atlanta Press Club's website. I'm Richard Warner. Thanks for joining us for this primary election debate from Georgia Public Broadcasting. This program was funded in part by a grant from the late Tom Watson Brown and by supporters of Georgia Public Broadcasting. Thank you.